Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron Filler. Welcome to Spine and Nerve Health. One of the most underdiagnosed pain conditions is piriformis syndrome. In fact, you've probably never heard of it. Very few people have. However, uh, sciatica is a very well-known cause of back and leg pain. But what few people understand is that sciatica due to spinal problems and sciatica due to piriformis syndrome can easily be confused during a medical diagnosis. And if this happens, a patient may end up getting a back surgery that is completely ineffective for relieving the pain because the sciatica was due to piriformis syndrome and not due to a problem in the spine. It's important to recognize the differences early on when the diagnosis is first being made. That way, you or a loved one suffering from back or leg pain can get the right diagnosis and get the right treatment the first time. People who suffer from sciatica typically offer the same complaint. Their legs hurt, often from the buttock down to their toes. The problem can be quite severe and painful, and in many cases can cause ongoing disability. Sciatica can be caused by pressure on a spinal nerve due to a herniated disc in the spine. When a disc becomes herniated, it swells beyond its normal size, causing pressure on nearby radicular nerves. These radicular spinal nerves connect to the sciatic nerve, and the result is lower back and leg pain, often extending all the way to the foot. In fact, sciatica is often referred to as a radiculopathy in medical circles because the pain comes from radicular nerves when it is caused by a problem in the spine. Sciatica pain ranges from annoying tingling in one's leg to disabling agony. People can suffer from sciatica in one or both legs, although one leg at a time tends to be more common. For most sufferers of sciatica, a combination of medication and physical therapy can help reduce or even eliminate symptoms. Back exercises and basic drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen can help reduce the inflammation in the disc, easing pressure on the nerve. But severe cases of sciatica are treated differently often with invasive back surgeries to relieve disc pressure on the radicular nerves. In these cases, doctors will employ a combination of medical imaging techniques, including magnetic resonance imaging, to determine the location of the disc inflammation. Yet, even after medical imaging and back surgery, many patients find they still have the exact same complaints, and they end up asking, why did I even have back surgery if it didn't relieve the pain? It's a good question, and one many physicians are reticent to answer. And little wonder, because each year in the United States, nearly 1.5 million people have lumbar MRI scans to try to find the cause of sciatic pain. Yet. In 1.2 million of those scans, the image fails to reveal a cause of the sciatica in the patient's spine. It gets worse. More than 300,000 lower back surgeries are performed annually in the U.S., attempting to alleviate the condition known as sciatica. And as many as 25% of these surgeries, 75,000 people, emerge from surgery no better than before, suffering as they always have from the unchanged sciatica. Of course, the reality is they aren't suffering from disc-based sciatica. Their cause of pain is not a herniated disc placing pressure on radicular nerves. What's causing their pain? Piriformis syndrome, the often hidden cause of sciatica for tens of thousands of Americans. Piriformis syndrome is named for the piriformis muscle, which is located deep within the buttocks and passes over the sciatic nerve as it travels from the spine through the pelvis and into the leg. When the piriformis muscle is inflamed or in spasm, the result can be searing pain down one's leg into the foot, mimicking the symptoms of spinal sciatica. So it's easy to see how these two afflictions can be mistaken for one another. Sciatica from piriformis syndrome is more likely to involve pain that is aggravated by sitting. Often, it occurs with little or no accompanying back pain.
The problem with sciatica is that in many cases, even sophisticated imaging doesn't definitively identify the source of the sciatic pain. Physicians then have to work from limited data, and this can lead to incorrect diagnoses and unnecessary surgeries. Thankfully, piriformis syndrome can be accurately diagnosed with magnetic resonance neurography, a patented imaging technique I invented nearly 10 years ago and available exclusively from the nerve scan centers of the Neurography Institute. A growing community of physicians is recognizing the superior diagnostic capabilities afforded by an MR neurography scan, which shows nerves in profound highlight. Regular MRI scans cannot show nerve tissue. Here, we can see a classic example of piriformis syndrome. In the first MR neurography image, we can see the sciatic nerves at the point of passage through the sciatic notch. In the next MR scan, we can see asymmetry in the size of the piriformis muscles. Asymmetry, or unevenness in size, may reflect either hypertrophy on the right or atrophy and spasm on the left. Muscle spasm may change the shape and hardness of a muscle without altering its total volume. The third scan confirms hyperintensity consistent with irritation of the left sciatic nerve and its antecedents. This helps the neurosurgeon confirm that the condition is indeed piriformis syndrome. The fourth MR image confirms the diagnosis, hyperintensity, and loss of fascicular detail on the left sciatic nerve at the point of passage through the sciatic notch. Only through sophisticated imaging services, like the MR neurography scans we were just reviewing, can a full and complete diagnosis be rendered for many conditions like piriformis syndrome. Without such a diagnosis, a surgeon might incorrectly feel that the patient suffers from sciatica of a spinal cause and recommend invasive back surgery, resulting in a long recovery and the possibility of little to no improvement as a result when the actual cause was a piriformis syndrome. Until recently, Piriformis surgery was a large and debilitating operation requiring hospitalization and long recovery times. One method involved a large lateral hip incision similar to hip replacement surgery, and the other method involved a similarly large incision and the complete detachment of all gluteal muscles from the iliac crest. Bottom line, weeks in rehabilitation, walking on crutches and pain, with limited success in treating the source problem. Worse, many patients realized permanent problems with their gait. No one should ever have these surgeries again. That's because today, there are minimally invasive techniques that can be carried out under local anesthetic as an outpatient. I developed a new type of treatment called the OpenMR Image Guided Injection, now available at the Institute for Nerve Medicine here in Santa Monica, California. Using the OpenMR technology, it's possible to deliver a specialized type of injection, which is capable of completely relieving the sciatica in many cases, avoiding the need for surgery altogether. In addition to the open MR injections, I developed a new form of piriformis syndrome surgery that involves only a very small incision. The procedure is relatively short in duration, and when it's done, the patient can go home and rest for a few days of recovery. Best of all, long-term results have been outstanding. In large-scale formal outcome trials involving hundreds of patients, relief was typically complete within two weeks, and there are extremely few cases of recurrence even after eight years. Most show vast improvement, no detectable impact on normal walking, and most important, a pain-free lifestyle. The numbers are clear. Patients with positive physical exam findings, positive MR neurography image findings, and a clear positive response to MR-guided piriformis injection have experienced an 85 to 90% good to excellent outcome. If you're suffering from sciatica, you should ask your doctor to consider the possibility that you may be suffering from a piriformis syndrome. With today's technology breakthroughs in medical imaging and advances in minimally invasive surgery, you're only a correct diagnosis away from appropriate treatment and a pain-free lifestyle. <laughs>